This is Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. From the corporate office to the cab of a truck, they're here to inspire and empower women in all professions. So gear down, sit back, and enjoy. Welcome to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. We're a show that works to inspire and empower women in trucking in the trades and every profession. We tackle all kinds of topics and we work to encourage women to be their very best with informative guests and women who've been champions. I'm Shelley. And I'm Kathy. No topic is taboo on our rig. We tackle the tough topics along with the not so tough topics. And we like to feature experts and celebrities who can assist women in being the best they can be. Achieving success sometimes seems unattainable. Life throws curveballs. People get discouraged and they give up on their dreams. Success is attainable. Genevieve Pitero makes it her mission to inspire men and women worldwide to listen to their heart voice connection in pursuing their passions. She definitely listened and followed her passion. She was a successful television marketing executive in New York City for 20 years when a little girl's question changed the course of her life. She began delivering pajamas and books to children in shelters and in 2001 founded Pajama Program, a nationally recognized nonprofit. Genevieve has been interviewed on Hallmark's Home and Family, Oprah, Today, CNN, Fox and Friends, Forbes, and the Wall Street Journal. Genevieve is an amazing lady with some equally amazing insight, and she's with us today. Welcome, Genevieve. Thank you so much for being on the show with us. Oh, I'm thrilled. Thank you for the invitation. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Kathy. Hello. You know, Genevieve, you really are a Renaissance woman who's done so many things. How about we begin with you telling us about yourself, along with how Pajama Program began, and what you do to inspire people on their climb to personal success? Sure, sure. But let me say, I do not drive a monster truck, so I am inspired. By <laughs> yes. It's quite a feat. Um, my godson and nephew drives those trucks, and I'm amazed, and I'm super amazed at your story. So, Oh, Kathy um, is an amazing lady. <laughs> yeah. Renaissance woman in her own right as well. My goodness. <laughs> Um, sure, I'd be happy to share my story. Um, I was a corporate exec. You know, I wanted to be Mary Tyler Moore, or should I say Mary Richards? Okay. Yeah. Always. Yeah. I loved that idea. You know, I used to, I was younger, so I used to sneak out after bedtime to watch her show. And to me, it was everything to be this powerful single woman, not worried about the traditional, you know, I have to get married and have kids early and she was just in a man's world, making it, you know, comfortable for her. And she had great best friend and pretty apartment. And she was just everything I wanted to be. And being the first girl, the first child of four, my dad came from Italy. My mom was also Italian. It was a very traditional household and, and upbringing. They expected me to have, you know, family and kids and get married and all of that. And I didn't have that calling. I wanted to be married. So I set out to work in TV in New York City, and I was doing well, 12, 13, 14 years in, got to be VP of marketing for a major television syndication company, and I was single, and I had a pretty apartment that I had a mortgage for, and I was so proud, and I could do what I wanted. My travels were both personal and business, so by the the measure of outside sources that I had always esteemed to impress, I was successful until one afternoon by myself in this crazy workaholic life, which was rare to be quiet one afternoon, I heard a voice in me and this voice asked me, if this is the next 30 years of your life, is this enough? And I was not accustomed to hearing myself talk to myself that way. And it stopped me. And I and I remember saying, oh, my goodness, I know that came from me. And I know that was some kind of a message. What's missing in my life? Because I knew immediately that it was true, that, that I wouldn't have been happy if I kept going, but couldn't put my finger on it. And the next second, I felt I didn't have children. And although it wasn't my plan, I all of a sudden felt 
I will probably never have children and I never really thought about it. And can I find a way to bring children into my life? I adored my nephews and my nieces, but that was the closest I had, had to children. And I remembered seeing news reports about a particular case in Manhattan where children were being abused by family and the police took one child I watched out of the home and into an emergency shelter. So I called the police and said, where do you bring these kids? And they told me all about the emergency system in New York, gave me some of the uh, public addresses, and I called. And I said, can I come and read to the children at night? Now, I don't know what possessed me to, but there was something going on that was totally separate from my workaholic driving personality. And they welcomed me. They, they said, sure, it'd be lovely. Now, I'm warning any listeners that this was pre-9-11. And things have changed in the last 25 years. But they welcomed me. I went in with children's books in my business suit. And they showed me to this very bare room. I didn't see any chairs that I could fit into, little chairs. And I sat on the floor and I saw within minutes these little faces at the door. And they brought in children who had been taken there by police and social workers that day to be processed, which is an ugly word. And they saw me sitting there and I saw as they came in that they were frightened and some more than others. And some had clothes that were soiled and some of them had clothes that didn't fit them. And I could tell this was nothing that I had ever experienced personally before being in a room with, you know, about a dozen of these children. They sat on the floor with me. I took out my storybooks and I started reading for about 45 minutes and they just sat staring at me. And I'd look up and I'd feel like they wanted me to say something or do something to, to, you know, to comfort them. And I was just, I didn't know what to do. I was, I was asked not to, you know, take it into my arms or not to, you know, make any gestures. So I, I just did as I was told and I read the stories and tried to give them loving looks. And this happened week after week, different children. And one night I followed to where they were going to sleep at night. The staff were lovely and they, they let me follow and it was an equally bare room as the one I had read to them in. And there were a couple of kids trying to, you know, hop onto futons and couches and sofas together. And they were huddled and they didn't have anything to change into. And as I watched, my bedtime came just powering back to me the memories of my mom and the way I, bedtime I thought was for all kids. You know, there was laughter and cookies and so and milk and, and water and any songs and hugs. I mean, it was just this this parade of of activity and love so that we didn't have to go to sleep and you know stay awake extra minutes and here i am staring at this very sad heartbreaking picture of a bedtime and they they slept in their clothes and i asked as i was leaving if i could bring pajamas next week and i and i asked myself so many times how is that the one thing that came out of my mouth but it was and they thought it was be a lovely idea so i brought pajamas and when I started to, I read, and then when I started to hand out the pajamas, children took them quietly, and then were led into that room. And this one little girl was just so afraid of me. And she just watched me. And then when I came over to her holding a pair of pink pajamas, she just shook her head, no, and she backed away. She just whispered, no, no, no. She kept repeating no. And I was, I was curious. I didn't know why the rest of the kids were okay with the pajamas. And she wanted to watch. So she was off to the side. And when the rest of the children had their pajamas and went into the room, I went over to this little girl who was standing now with a staff member and I knelt down with those pajamas I tried to give, give her earlier. And I, and I said, you can touch these, honey. Feel how soft they are. They're going to fit you and they're pink like your pink top. And her top was soiled. It was pink and purple. And her pants were so short, like we used to call them floods. And her ponytails were lopsided and her, her white sneakers were like size 10, I guess, just to cover her feet, but they were so big. Yeah. And she just kept saying no. And I asked one more time, honey, don't you want your pajamas? You can keep them. And she just looked at me and she whispered, what are pajamas? Oh my. And that was the moment that everything changed for me. Wow. That's so heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. heartbreaking. Yeah. And I had to explain yeah. to her what pajamas are. Yeah. Yeah. And she took them and they put them on her and she looked back with a little smile and I was done. So that's what inspired you. You decided you were going to provide pajamas and storybooks for children in need. You set out by yourself to do that. That's just amazing. 
no, I said, I'm going to do this and I'm not going to tell anybody because I don't know what I would tell anybody. And I, I became obsessed with her and, and the others. And I just snuck out of work early. I I wrote a book too, and I'm anxious to read yours, Kathy, because I was obsessed. And all the enthusiasm and drive I had for my corporate job was just waning. And all I wanted to do was get out, get that credit card and charge as many pajamas as I can. And I mean, looking sure. back, it was, it was a scene in all the stores I was in, you know, carrying as many as I could. And I got lots of looks and lots of questions, you know, am I running a camp? But I had tons of pajamas and I just, one shelter told another, told another, and I got calls constantly. There's this lady bringing pajamas to the shelters for the kids, you know, call her. And mm -hmm. I was fine with that, but it, it was, it, it grew, you know, it, it overtook mm -hmm. me and I didn't tell anyone for months and months because I knew in my heart, this was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. But my brain, of course, was telling me, what about your mortgage? And you've now gone into debt that you could never get out of. And <laughs> it's all going to come jumbling down, tumbling down. I don't know who you think you're fooling, but juggling is not uh, one of your best uh, <laughs> trades. So it went from there, you know, it, it, it got worse. And then it got, of course, better and it all ended well, but it was quite a trip. Oh, my goodness. But bravo to you. You were a champion for these children and you saw a need and the difference you made in their lives. I, I hope so. You know, yeah. I, I, everyone said, and before I ever met that little girl or, or saw those news reports and changed my life, I always thought the same as so many people who said to me, oh, look, one person, look what you're doing. You know, one person, you you did all this, you know, and after several years, and, and now it's past 7 million books in pajamas, 40 some chapters across the United States. I, I know it's it wasn't impossible that it was just me. It's it's not the power of one that changes things. It's the power of one another that moves exactly. mountains, moves people. Yep. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what, you know, that's the message that I have loud and clear because an idea is is just an idea. One person can only do so much. I'd still be like Santa Claus with a sack over my shoulder. But it, 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 it reminds me of exactly of what I started doing um, when I first got my job because I was homeless for a week in between nursing and, you know, treatment and now my fabulous job. But what I started doing, because when I was homeless, I recognized the fact that we couldn't, the homeless people have no access to water. And it's a big deal when it's hot, right? Yeah. And so what I did is I just went my first time when I realized, oh, my God, it's like, uh, what, 90 degrees. And, you know, these people don't have water. They, they, they have no access. So I went out and I bought seven cases of water, you know, at the local store and a, a couple coolers and ice and, you know, and I started driving around and my daughter came with me that day and she, she dubbed it Operation Hydration. Well, and all I did was drive around the alleys and give water to the homeless. Well, you should have seen the lineups and people yeah, running I because I had I had yeah. made a, I had made a, a sign for the side of the, the vehicle, Operation Hydration, free water. Well, oh my gosh. So now that one act started me, I, every city I go to, that's what I do. And it's it's not, I mean, that's my thing, but if it inspires somebody else to go buy water and hand out water, well then I, that's the, you know, hopefully, because like you said, it's not just one person, it's, it's one another. Yep. It so takes a I, village. Yep. Yeah, it really does. Because I mean, I can only do so much and I only I have so much time, but I always, always do it consistently, whatever city I'm in. It doesn't matter. Right. So, wow. I'm yeah. so impressed. It's, well, I'm impressed with you. Yes. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors, coming up. Industry Movement Trucking Moves America Forward is telling the story of the industry. Our safety champions, the women of trucking, independent contractors, the next generation of truckers, and more. Help us promote the best of our industry. Share your story and what you love about trucking. Share images of a moment you're proud of. And join us on social media. Learn more at TruckingMovesAmerica.com. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelly Johnson and Kathy Takaro. Genevieve Pitero is a true champion. In 2001, she founded Pajama Program to help children in need at shelters. 
The program distributes pajamas and storybooks and has changed children's bedtimes forever. Genevieve teaches people how to power their purpose and launch their legacy. Her story is absolutely amazing. So Genevieve, I wanted to ask about Pajama Program today. Is it worldwide? How has it evolved? Well, I, as, a, as the founder, I wanted to run it. So I never expected, never expected to, you know, go beyond my community. So I, as I neared 20 years of being executive director as well as founder, I knew I wanted to write a book and speak because I learned the value of purpose and of working together with a, a common purpose. And so I'd often been asked to speak and write. So after 20 years, I passed the executive directorship uh, baton, baton to Kelly, uh, to sorry, Jamie, who is our was our board president at one time. And she's doing a great job. And she's teaching, not only is she providing books and pajamas, but she's also working with the children and the families that are intact or trying to be intact And the children who can understand the value of bedtime, because one of the things that I've always saw, and Jamie, of course, does too, is how do these children sleep in trauma and what they've been through in their families? How do they even wake up and function, let alone have an opportunity to thrive and, you know, explore their talents and their, their brains. And so teaching these children in a fun way about bedtime when they get their new pajamas and new books is just an added bonus now that we've been able to do because of the support and because people have just embraced um, uh, this work and our children. You're making them feel safe. Safe and loved. Safe yes. and loved. Yes. Yeah. I know. So when I essential. Little, yeah. So essential. And, and mm-hmm. yeah, these days we're all worried about sleep, right? And we're all worried about our, our health because of not getting enough sleep and we know how we can't function. And you start with these little kids who've already been through more trauma than most of us. Yeah. How could it be possible that they wouldn't, you know, have nightmares and that would, that always upset me. Oh, I just love what you came up with. I mean, you've impacted so many lives. Have you heard from any of the children that you've helped? Um, uh, you know, I stay in touch with one organization that was one of the very first I'd ever visited. And one little girl was two. Mm-hmm. Um, and her name is Teresa. And she, I have a picture of her holding up her pajamas at two. And when we celebrated our 20 years, or 15 years, actually, because she was 18, going to college, which still, when I say it, I am so, so touched that she received some support from our board members along the way, years into it, because we watched her grow. She came to our reading centers. As she got older, she read to the little ones who were in her group home and others who were at our reading center. And she came to our event celebrating 15 years as this 18-year-old going to college and spoke so eloquently about her love of reading and how, how much she just loved being part of our work and having us as this other family in addition to her foster family. And that to me, you know, I, I can rest knowing that she is in going to college and she's just flourishing other than her. I, I know the others that work there. Um, most of this population that I started with are, are still sort of fluid population. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's my, She's my heart. But it really shows the impact you've made. You you changed the entire trajectory of her life. You inspired her. Uh, if it hadn't been for you and what you were doing, if she would have had a totally different outcome. Bravo to you. And, and that is just amazing. Well, I think, thank you. But I, I do, I, of course, I think we all had an impact. Mm-hmm. But sure. she she did it. Yeah. And those were such difficult difficult circumstances they're all in such precarious situations especially the ones who are in emergency shelters you know it could go either way as we know yeah. mm-hmm. so how do people reach out to your organization i wanted to ask that in case the listeners wanted to help in some way or make a donation or learn more sure where do they pajama find program, them? yeah pajamaprogram.org 
Okay. So they just go to the website and then they can reach out and they can, yes. what are the needs of the organization? Um, well, they can see what is the pressing need because it's the website will talk about what's happening right now and what the needs are right now. And if they have any questions or or want any introductions to anyone there they can email me and I, maybe you'll put it in your show notes how to reach me my mm -hmm. website my yes. email. Mm -hmm. but if they go to pajamaprogram.org they will they will see then depending on where they live they can see if there's a chapter um anything that's collected locally stays local so if they're wherever they are in the u.s will stay with on the next uh, on the list of whoever is in that town waiting whatever shelter or group of kids will get the next donation of pajamas or books or will buy them with the financial donation so it is local and um depending on where you live there might be a reading center we only have a couple but you never know especially when you're in new york you can help read or atlanta um so yeah so take a look at everything find where you feel your niche is and if i can help reach out to me separately wonderful this makes a huge impact. I mean, when there's so little, you know, when I think about it as a child, what inspired me to read was my mom reading to me. You know, it is, yeah, yeah. It, it, it sparks the imagination. I was read to so much. I memorized the books and I remember sitting down <laughs> with family members and People thought I could read before I could, but I'd memorize yes. the books, you know? <laughs> Sneaky little girl. Oh, yeah. I mean, I it, oh, oh, sorry. No, go um, ahead, Kathy. I was going to say, you know, um, also what's really important is like coming from a, I came, um, I was in and out of women's shelters for years. And um, I know firsthand the stress that it, that it, that, that it, in it, um, leaves in the mom that not to mention the children who are you know un uprooted and you know the whole violence thing and and the reading um just even if like the mothers are often so overwhelmed that they even reading a book to the child in the shelter can be overwhelming so for you to to go in and to read to the children i'm so that just blows my mind that is so amazing that you did that because Number one, it takes the pressure off the mom so the mom can focus on other things. And number two, um, the love and the kindness shown from you is uh, something that you may not realize how far that ripple of love extends and how yeah. beneficial that is to the healing process in th those children. And I just, I want to commend you so, so much. Like, I'm just so impressed, so in awe with what, what you've done. So thank you. Well, you know, I I had so many new feelings when when I sat there with the children and you know I, I was so grounded like never before so yeah. when I was trying to give them love and me they were doing the same right back well yeah, yeah. and like Shelly you were saying you memorized the, the the books from the stories yeah. well I really believe that in in traumatic instances like that in a shelter in order to forget you know, what they just went through, they would probably just jump into the story that you're reading and, and easily absorb what you're saying because they, they're trying to to change their 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 reality. So yeah. it would be really easy to, to memorize and to create almost like a fantasy world to try and get out of, you know, the pain that they're trying to forget. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. You inspire hope too. This is wonderful. Well, you know, it is so, so... Um, amazing that you just said that uh, I have a drawing of that little girl who asked me what are pajamas because I never saw her again and they wouldn't give me any information which I certainly understand and she just stuck with me and I never thought you know I never thought anything of it that 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 that, that night but I couldn't never get out, her out of my mind but in time unfortunately you know your memory fades a little I can still see her now but not as clearly as I could see her the week after, the month after. So I called my niece, who is an artist, and asked her if I speak to her on the phone, because she's in Chicago, I'm in New York, if I give her all the details, every single detail I could remember, could she sketch something just so I could have something? And she did. And when I opened it in the mail, I cried because she found the essence. And when I showed her for the first time to our supporters at our annual fundraising event, Everyone cheered and someone shouted from the audience, let's call her Hope. Hope. How appropriate. Oh, I oh, love it. I love wow. it. So, 
That's I love your, that. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, hope. I put a picture on my book yes. and saw that story. And that's, yeah, she's hope. I, I don't know who she is, where she is in life. I hope she's healthy and mm -hmm. doing well. And you're still inspiring hope. You work with men and women worldwide um, and teach them how to listen to their heart voice connection, to pursue their passions. I wanted to cover some of that, too. I mean, you really are an inspiration to so many people. Well, I'm I, I'm trying to share, you know, share what I couldn't believe was happening because of listening to my heart voice and then being brave after I found my voice and realized I'm going to tell people whatever they think is going to be. I'm going to still tell them why I'm doing this and why I'm changing my life. And I don't know what to expect. The power of finding your purpose and, you know, listening to your heart voice and then that moxie and determination and just to tell everyone if you are passionate, and I think I was passionate. Oh, yes. You'd be amazed at people who want to share in that and want to, you know, want to, it's contagious. Mm -hmm. And that's how we, we grow together. And that's how we get out of our own negative thinking. And that's how we help. And it's, it's helping us. It's helping our community, our family, and the greater good just to share with each other a little bit of doing for someone else. And I'm inspired by, you know, what you're doing. And I'm inspired so often. And I want to live in that inspiration. I want to fill my world with all these men and women and young people who are inspiring because that's how we're going to make it and make a, make a really good and a better world. Absolutely. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors coming up. Trucking Moves America Forward, or TMAF, is building a positive image of trucking by telling the story of the hardworking drivers and industry professionals who support the industry. And you can be a part of it. Learn more about TMAF and how you can join and be a part of the industry movement working to build a strong image of trucking by visiting TMAF's website at truckingmovesamerica.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our latest channel, TikTok. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. We're talking with Genevieve Pitero. She's an international speaker, personal strategic coach, and author. She teaches people how to listen to their heart voice connection to pursue their passions and achieve success. Genevieve has proven success in her own life. She's the founder of Pajama Program that distributes pajamas and storybooks to children in need. She's definitely followed her passion. Genevieve, you speak to people, you travel around, and, and you teach people how to pursue success and their passions and their purpose. What are some of your messages that you can share with us? Because well, there are a lot of people who I think have lost their way. Yes. And the pandemic is, you know, I was afraid when my publisher said, you know, your book's coming out in the dead of the pandemic and the isolation and everything had to go from launching in person and speaking in person to Zoom. And it, it was still a very dire situation in the world. Mm -hmm. And I, something in me, and I learned 20 some years now that the universe and God and whoever you have in your heart is there to support. So there was a reason. And that's because I talk about purpose and the whole book is about finding, you know, what your way, even though I made mistakes, this is, this is how I can share it. And that everybody came out of the pandemic, not everybody, but most people rethinking their path. So I started speaking about that. And the number one thing I feel is that people are afraid, take a chance on their heart. They think, you know, the heart's not as smart as the brain and you're studying and your parents and your society says, study math, study science, be a teacher, be an engineer, um, you know, go to where it's, proven successful your heart's just you know this fluffy stuff and you know you have a family and you love them that's what the heart's for but the heart's a lot smarter than we give it credit for and I took a chance and it was you know and, and I say it was there were a lot of um challenges and scary times for me and I think people are afraid to take that chance and I want to support them and I want to be there I want to be able to tell them I know believe me I know let's work together. And I, I help individuals, 
I speak to audiences just to sort of light a fire. And like I said, I keep saying, I share the downs because the ups are three times higher than the downs are low. And I think people just need to know that and believe that. Oh, absolutely. On your website, it says live with purpose, act with passion, and embrace the human connection in your life and work. It really, you've lived this and you're teaching people how to do that again. I do think as a society, we have become disconnected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We certainly have. Even though we have these smart devices in our pockets, we're more disconnected than ever before. Sometimes I feel that way. Yeah. I think there's, when you're in person, there's this energy and you feel, you feel trust with someone or, or distrust. You know, we, we know our intuition. We feel the energy And when you don't even have an opportunity to say, oh, this person feels good. Tell me more. I want to get to know this person. You know, maybe we can do some work together. Maybe we can be friends. You know, maybe there's more here. That's absolutely a do not believe that it is the same when you're texting or when you're on your, your device. And that's a huge part of moving together in life. It really is. Mm -hmm. You have a book called Purpose, Passion, and Pajamas. I love that title, by the way. That's I really love cool. it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, a fun title. <laughs> what is the book about? It's the story. It's the story of um, my trek up the ladder because of what I wanted to do against the family traditional path for me and what happened, including that first question from my soul, my heart voice, if this is the next 30 years. On to the second question by the little girl of, you know, what are pajamas and what I did and how my obsession was the most beautiful thing in the world, but also the most, um, the most dangerous to life as I knew it and my career and my finances and, you know, people in my life who I thought would be so supportive were like, what are you doing? Are you crazy? And I get that from so many people who are afraid to make the change. That's, that's the one thing that's so hard for us, the people we love you know, aren't right there immediately rallying for us. They're yes. afraid and they try to talk us out of it. And mm-hmm. it, it was hard for me. So it's all the ups and downs of everything. I didn't even know what a 501c3 is. I didn't even set out to start a nonprofit. It just had a life of its own. And, you know, there's a story in my book that thousands and thousands, because of one little article in a national magazine, thousands and thousands of boxes and packages and envelopes of cash came to my little apartment with people saying, you know, please buy some more pajamas for the kids. Please, can you give these? And I just looked and I was newly married. So there's a story in there too. Just then I was newly married and we looked at each other and I just said, this is my responsibility now. I And somebody wrote, if you send us your 501c3, we'd like to give you a grant. And I looked at my new husband and I said, what is this thing? 501 little C number three. And I didn't even know what a nonprofit was, but it was a responsibility from that point on. Oh, it's wonderful. And you're inspiring people with your speaking engagements too, teaching people about their heart voice connection. And are you basically giving people the ability to overcome their fear and listen within themselves? Because it's it does seem, especially when we become adults, we forget to do that. Yes, it starts with that. But I also want them to know they're not alone because they, they think they are. I thought I was too. Uh, the reason why I didn't say anything to anyone, but at least they'll know when I'm standing in front of them that I'm on their side. This happened. I am not fake mm-hmm. and I didn't make myself up. Poof. I went through it. Other people have gone through it. Here's my phone number to call me. Let's talk. I'll, I'll help you get through it. And it's also something for, for employees and teams and leaders Everybody has to get on the same page, even in a company. The, the collective purpose is yes. so important. It's your individual purpose, but it's also a collective purpose when you when you have a, a job and when you have teammates and you have a, a leader and the leader has teams. It's got to be collective. You have to find that. And that's very important because sometimes leaders don't listen and they're only as good as their team, you know, and that collective voice that you're talking about. Yes, yes. You know, and I say I grew up with bosses and we don't want bosses anymore. We want leaders who inspire. And that's Mm -hmm. the key difference. I think bosses, I don't know that they generally inspire. Mine didn't. 
But um, leaders, that's their that's their number one job in my book. Yeah, the the very word boss it it, it makes you think of the hall monitor in school or something. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. And I think we saw a lot of them retire after the pandemic because they saw things changing, and I'm not sure that they liked it. Yeah. People want to be inspired. They don't want to be bossed around. I, th- I think human beings are independent and they want to be able to shine in whatever area they are. And if they have someone who isn't listening, who is more of a, an authority figure, it doesn't bring out the best and it, it wouldn't bring out the heart voice that you're talking about. Yeah, they want to contribute their voice, like you said, their voice. Mm-hmm. They don't want to just contribute by showing up and putting a little piece from left side to the right side and then they go home. They want they want to be heard. They want to be respected. We all do. So what are some suggestions you have for women who are listening on if they have an idea or if there's some particular passion that they haven't pursued, they're afraid to do it? What's the first step that they need to take? Are there some baby steps that will guide them in the right direction? Um, yes. First, it's never too late. Okay. So get rid of that blocking a block because a lot of women think it is. Um, I teach the jump or the slide. Some people can manage a slide easier than a jump. And I understand that. I have a jumping gene. I don't know why, but it's not always right for people. And sometimes a jump can be preceded by a slide. There are lots of ways to slide what your heart's telling you you're supposed to be doing into your life. And so I go over options with them there. Then, you know, depending on where they are, there's there's the plan, there are baby steps. You can't, you wouldn't believe how many people you know until I say, write down everybody you know. And then we go through all that list. You know, we know so many people that we don't even realize. We just don't open our mind to it. I talk to everybody and I go on LinkedIn when I'm looking for somebody I don't know and I find people and I say hello talk to everybody. So we, my process with individuals starts like that. And even the very first step, it's on my website, how to find your purpose exercise. Anybody can go to it. 90 minute exercise, just you pen and paper, no computer, glass of wine, cup of tea, cookies, pizza, whatever you want, just you and do the exercise and do it alone. That'll, that'll take you out of your head. That's going to tell you every step of the way, why you shouldn't, couldn't dare not do it. And put you in a place where everything is okay. And you you will see at the end on paper what your heart told you to write. Those are really good directions. I mean, you're giving people kind of a template, a roadmap to to begin. And I always I always say anybody who listens, um, contact me, spend an hour, no charge. Let's just talk. I just want you to know that there is a person out there, a real person who believes in you. You've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. This is wonderful, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors coming up. Kathy DeCaro is nothing short of amazing. She not only drives the world's biggest truck as a heavy equipment operator in Northern Alberta, Canada. She's an international motivational speaker and the author of Dream Big, an autobiography about overcoming a lifetime of trauma and abuse that led to dreams of success. Kathy inspires people the world over to change their lives and improve their self-worth. Her book will change your life. She's passionate about personal growth and believes anyone can change their circumstances and overcome their obstacles if they believe in themselves. Her life will amaze you and seriously inspire you. Be sure to order a copy of her book, Dream Big, on Amazon.com. Industry movement Trucking Moves America Forward is telling the story of the industry. Our safety champions, the women of trucking, independent contractors, the next generation of truckers, and more. Help us promote the best of our industry. Share your story and what you love about trucking. Share images of a moment you're proud of and join us on social media. Learn more at truckingmovesamerica.com. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. 
We're talking with Genevieve Pitero, an incredible champion who started the nonprofit Pajama Program that distributes pajamas and storybooks to children in need in shelters. As a successful businesswoman and speaker, she also teaches men and women worldwide how to find their passion and launch their own legacy to success. So do you work with people one-on-one on Zoom and that sort of thing, or do people have to uh, go to a seminar? How, how does this work? No, I work on one-on-one, and okay. then I speak and do groups for employers, employees, different kinds of master classes and things, but yep, everything from one-on-one to the big speaking engagements. You know, it's so important when you have an idea, if you can have a sounding board, and like you said, a lot of times people in your life, your loved ones, that sort of thing are like, what are you, nuts? Um, you don't want to hear that. I mean, that really clouds your thinking, and it really hurts your focus. So to be able to talk to someone like you who says, you know, you're not crazy. This is really cool. And and you can provide the inspiration and maybe some really constructive feedback that will keep that person on that route. Yes, yes. And yeah. in my book, I talk about the one very first person I confided in, and she just knocked me right down, Oof. right down. And it took me months to, to tell another soul because all my fears were realized in every question she asked. And I had no answers. I had no answers. I thought she was going to say, wow, what a nice thing. Can I help? Sure. Opposite. Wow. You know, and it is shocking when you talk to somebody that you think you know really well and they react that way. It's like, uh, okay, that was not what I wanted to hear. And that's not helpful. Nope. No. Human beings tend to rule on the side of safety. I think, I don't know if it's the survival mode or could some of it, depending on who you're dealing with, a little bit of jealousy there? Um, you never know. You never know. I think somebody said once, and it was very poignant, people aren't afraid of you changing. They're afraid they're going to make you change. You're going to change how you feel about them. You're going to, you're very comfortable in the way you see your friends. Everybody's got a place. You're good. Then they go and they change things and it makes you uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So Sometimes it's it's about you and not about what's best and supportive for your friend or your family member. People get stuck and they do like continuity. They don't like change. <laughs> yeah, right. It's true. A lot of people with my life and being gone from, you know, what I, they, they want you to remain doing what you're doing. Like um, when I first started uh, giving back to the communities, uh, to the women's shelters and, you know, the youth centers in in the local area where I was, well, people, it's as if they wanted me to continue doing that for the next 20 years. So when I up and moved and decided to grow and, you know, I'm advancing, I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm meeting, I'm meeting the people that I want in my future, not, you know, where I wanted to stay in the past. Well, it really bothered people um that I was leaving them behind so to say they didn't understand my need for growth they didn't um um they didn't appreciate you know uh I guess my 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 personal needs they they just wanted to hang on to what I could give them in that moment do you know what I mean so I think that's a big part of um people's they were afraid that I was going to leave them behind and forget about them. Yeah, I guess is what it boiled down to. Yeah, they were- and yeah, you know, I mean, change is hard for so many people. Uh, it really, really is, and it's 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 difficult to adapt to the ever evolving world, and especially because for me, anyway, it just seems it's so rapidly evolving. I have a hard time keeping up. I mean, just look at the the phones. They come up yeah. with a new phone every year. I'm still stuck on the Note 20 and they're already at Note 25. I'm like, what? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, oh, right. yeah. Technology has really, really, really right. increased the pace of everything. And I think- It is, yeah. It, People get stuck on, on, they wanna hang on to the good times to, uh-huh. you know, without uh, letting go of what they had with you. So, you know, and I think that's just a human nature a little bit. Sure yeah. I mean, ob- yeah. sure, there is obviously people that, you know, get jealous and have uh, other emotional issues going on. But I think in general, um, that's where it, where it is, you know. Yes, that's, that's sad. But people are, yeah, like you said, people are comfortable where they are. Don't move things around. Just leave them the way they are. <laughs> yeah. Genevieve, you are such an inspiration. Um, You're all about purpose. 
which every single one of us on this earth has a purpose. Not everybody feels that way, but I think you're inspiring and affirming in people's minds. They have a purpose and you're guiding them on the ability to fulfill that purpose, which is so important. I hope they feel the support and I hope, you know, I hope there are a couple of them that are now going to revisit what they put on the back burner <laughs> and maybe reach out or maybe give it some more thought. I, I hope they do. Where do people reach you for your book and for your insight on finding their purpose? My website's genevievepituro.com and they can reach me at gen, G-E-N, at genevievepituro.com and just tell them to refer to this podcast and you lovely ladies and I would mm -hmm. love, love to hear their ideas and what they want to do. Wonderful. I think you're going to help a whole lot more women uh, and men for that matter. You work with both men and women. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. I hope oh, so. I love this. You are a breath of fresh air. Um, you've made my day for sure. Oh, oh. <laughs> and I love chatting with you both. I wish you were closer. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. You know, that's one thing about this show. We meet so many cool people and it just makes you feel so good about humanity. It's like there are people out here who are giving back. And that's what it's about. Yeah. And people like you giving us a microphone and bringing people together and, you know, inspiring, inspiring too. Yeah, that's a nice thing about the internet. So many people can listen and, or view something. And when you can have the messaging that's empowering and inspiring, that's what it's about. That's the good part of the internet, because there's a lot of stuff out there that people mm -hmm. spend their time looking at that isn't. Right. And it, we're trying to bring some messages that will help people. I'm with you. Thank you so much, Genevieve. I really appreciate you being on the show with us. Well, thank you both. I appreciate you. I'm so I'm, I'm so delighted that you asked me to be your guest, and I hope that we've we've given some hope to some people who think you know oh, that's going to stay on the back burner. No, bring it up, bring it to the front. That's right. <laughs> and what are your two websites yeah. again for your nonprofit? Pajama Pro sure, pajamaprogram.org and genevievepituro.com. This is exciting. Thank you again, Genevieve. Thank you both, Shelley and Kathy. Thank you. We hope you've enjoyed this latest episode, and if you want to hear more episodes of Women Road Warriors or learn more about our show, be sure to check out womenroadwarriors.com. And please, follow us on social media. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. If you want to be a guest on the show, or have a topic or feedback, email us at sjohnson at womenroadwarriors.com. Mm -hmm.